Um, hello. We will show you a little QGIS and GIS demonstration with uh, Austin GIS Bro. Thank you for the and, introduction. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, for a more and greater introduction, I will let uh, him present him more than... Uh, Okay. Well, yeah, my name is Thomas Montgomery, as I've said in my Spanish introduction, but I'm a GI systems consultant with the city of Austin, Texas. Okay. So, Thomas, um, I didn't, uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't uh, record this, the, the Spanish introduction, so... Can you redo it? Yeah, sure, no problem. Ah. Hola, hello. Soy Thomas Montgomery. Este tutorial será impartido en inglés, pero habrá oportunidad de hacer preguntas en español. I'm Thomas Montgomery. This tutorial will take place in English, but I will now clarify in a Spanish introduction that the opportunity to ask questions in Spanish will be possible. Hola queridos amigos y bienvenidos a este tutorial en QGIS en nuestra diversa, diversa comunidad que crece muy rápidamente. Queremos presentarles este tutorial en métodos analíticos QGIS y creación de mapas web tanto en inglés como en español para hacer crecer la comunidad aún más. Pero desafortunadamente nuestro presentador Julian solamente habla inglés como segundo lenguaje. Estamos más que felices en resp responder sus preguntas, ya sea por voz o texto en el canal de No Mic Voice Chat y traducirlos lo mejor posible para Julian si es requerido. De hecho, nos gustaría que hagan to todas las preguntas que pueden tener y quiero agradecerles de nuevo por ve venir y interesarse en esta relación de mutuo beneficio entre el SIG, Ecología y lenguaje. Vamos a grabar este tutorial en video subtitulado para los amigos que no pueden entender. That is my introduction in Spanish. So please, Perfect. Please introduce so, yourself, um, Julian. So I'm Julian, Julian Monticolo. Uh, I'm a GIS French expert and I work for the National Museum of Natural History and uh, I will show you some GIS uh, Geographic Information System software with uh, QGIS um, and uh, for as you see um, you can uh, find it on QGIS.org uh, um, you can uh, set the website and the app uh, in uh, a lot of language, uh, English, of course, and uh, Espanol, too. Um, so, you know, we can go for it. Yeah. And... Um, you can uh, download it uh, easily uh, by in the home page uh, and uh, go for different type of installation uh, on Windows, on Linux, uh, on Mac OS X too, um, and uh, for. Beginner users, uh, I recommend uh, the standalone uh, installation. And for more uh, developer or GIS uh, technician and experts, uh, I recommend uh, this one through the OSGO4W uh, installator. 
So, uh, QGIS has the great uh, documentation uh, in constant, constantly improved. Um, so, um, even if um, the current version is uh, 3 .22, um the there is just few fi new features between uh, the three dot uh, six, sixteen, and um, you can go for it. So. In the um, QGIS manual, uh, you you have um, you can find a little uh, introduction uh, about uh, QGIS. What is a GIS and GIS software? And uh, you find a classical documentation uh, about the software. And um, you have um, exercise and tutorials uh, for a more practical uh, QGIS on for those who want to learn uh, QGIS uh, with practice. So, um, like a lot of documentation uh, in the uh, left. Uh, bottom left corner you can click and select your language and uh, the version of the documentation so for example uh, in english and this is the uh, 3.16 documentation and if you click here you have uh, the next uh, documentation with uh, the new features so take have a t I advise you to have a take a look. Um, so when uh, QGIS is installed, uh, it look like this. Just uh, classic uh, software. I will. I just do a new. I will restart uh, the the software because I I just uh, create another profile for show uh, how Q, QGIS uh, show uh, when you first install the the software. It's uh, slightly different. So um, I um, that's uh, ah yes um, it's in French. I can go for options and set the um, I, I think um, where are the language uh, the language. No, I don't see. Maybe in project properties. No, it's application properties. So options. Ah, yes, <laughs> this one. You have to check this one. And uh, translation of the user interface. So you can set it in Espanol. But uh, um, I will choose uh, American English for more uh, practical translation. So I will restart. It needs uh, a restart. So yes, there it is. So here are the news uh, templates of projects. Uh, and a recent projects, if any. Uh, so, um, when you launch uh, a QGIS uh, software, it opens a new project. So, you can just click on new project and yes, all the news, templates, and other things uh, disappear. I 
like to take this panel and drag it here to have broader access like this and layer like this. So, what is a GIS software? Um, GIS software uh, can manage uh, and show uh, geographic data. So, basically, uh, a geographic data uh, is um, like uh, data, but with uh, coordinates and uh, geo data. Um, so, the minimal uh, informa geographic Im information you can have, it's a point. So, you can uh, do some points. And each point uh, 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 have two information, a X and a Y. And uh, commonly in certain uh, systems, like uh, uh, w WGS84, or the system used by a lot of uh, GPS units, um, latitude, latitude for Y, and longitude uh, for X. So, um, we can do uh, points, but behind the points, uh, you can add information, uh, maybe uh, some info as in text. Yeah. Here, if I oh, yeah. just fill the next ones. Um, so when I create uh, a layer, I need to toggle editing first. And uh, when it's uh, in editing mode, I can uh, add point features. And now, because I add a field in the attribute table, uh, I can add some info. Uh, why, uh, what I see here, um, yeah, a bush. OK, here, a tree. OK, and uh, now, you have a point with an attribute data attached to it. You can have more uh, fields. Um, it's not named uh, columns, uh, it's named fields. And uh, every go. So you can uh, do, uh, if we rely, um, if we connect uh, dots between them, uh, we have uh, lines, so we can have lines. And if we close a line, we can have areas or polygons. So it's like basic uh, geometry. So um, Thomas uh, sent me uh, some data, um, and uh, we can look at what is in me. Uh, so, no, not this one. Uh, stream, yeah. Uh, some botanic data. So first, um, in uh, for GIS uh, use, I advise to uh, set uh, data and Range, arrange data uh, in folders uh, or folders for source data. Uh, I name it DL for download. Um, I made um, uh, a, di a re um, directory for uh, administrative um, data and um, some other data are here, but I can uh, do um, a folder with uh, named uh, CS 
SV, uh, avoid spaces and special characters. It's better. So here's the CSV. CSV means a comma separated uh, file. Um, and um, I can open it with, uh, oh, what's the name of, uh, hmm, I don't know. A spreadsheet, yeah. You can um, you can open it with Excel on other spreadsheet uh, software. So I will just double click on it, and um, I will look uh, what's inside of uh, um, of the table, but uh, without um, uh, uh, spreadsheet software, I can. Uh, do that directly in QGIS. So the first and more important uh, button is this one, Open Data Source Manager or in Layer Data Source Manager. So I can go in the delimited text here and uh, to choose the category and uh, search for the data and CSV and uh, I will go for this one botanic and plants data um, CSV okay uh, comma separated values um, you can uh, set the number of you have a lot of um, option if you want. Um, you can see the layer of first or the first uh, sample data, the first rows of the of the file. And uh, the more important for us here, um, it's the geometry definition. So we see. Here, we have two fields uh, named latitude and longitude, uh, so they are coordinates, so we can make points with this file. So we just uh, choose point coordinates, uh, x field uh, is longitude, the longitude uh, is the x, and the y field is latitude. Uh, see the Earth like um, geometric uh, plan uh, with the equator as uh, x uh, axis and the Greenwich axis like uh, the y axis. So um, a GPS uh, prediction um, sy coordinate system is um, WGS. 84. So in um, in QGIS, you can select the coordinate system uh, reference. So you can just type it here. And uh, for WGS uh, 84, you have a lot of uh, results. So um, a little trick to find it uh, fastly is to type uh, 43 26 and you find it directly is the uh, EPSG code, uh, European Petroleum Survey Group. That's a group of persons that defined a uh, sum of projection and coordinate systems. So I select it. Um, and I can add the layer. So there it is. Uh, here are my points. Um, can I add some background info? Uh, so QGIS comes with a uh, little Easter eggs, but uh, one of them is very useful. It's to uh, type in the coordinates uh, bar 
type word and enter, and you can uh, now uh, have the world countries, uh, and you see that the Botagen are located in Chile. Uh, one point isn't. Mm, it can have errors in uh, the data, so we can delete it uh, later. So, um, we can uh, add another uh, Another Julian, file? Julian, yep. sorry. I think that might actually be Easter Island, which is considered part of Chile. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, so that, that's, uh, that, that might be correct yeah. data. Oh, okay, no, okay. Sorry, sorry, I didn't oh. know. <laughs> I know uh, French, <laughs> France have a lot of isles, but uh, Chile, I don't, I didn't know that uh, Chile have uh, had an island, so sorry, <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, in the bro in the browser, you can uh, instead of the world map and uh, the Easter QGIS uh, Easter egg, you can go in the browser. Natively, uh, uh, there is a X, Y, Z tiles, and if you unpack it. Uh, you have OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap is a um, uh, project, an open project uh, that uh, maps uh, data, all the data, a lot of data of the world. So you can uh, add it in the project. Uh, right click on the mouse and uh, uh, add layers project. So, yeah. You can uh, see, uh, yeah, okay. So the point is not an error, it's uh, located on, the, on uh, this island. Here you see uh, three, uh, three layers, we name it uh, layers, and um, this one and this one are vector layers, and uh, this one is a raster layer because uh, there are images that are uh, loaded by um, on uh, from the internet and uh, another thing you see the layer order so um, in most of place an eye here and you see the different layers uh, from the top to the bottom. So first we see the point layer. After we see the raster layer that is uh, totally opaque and uh, cover everything. So we don't see any more the world map. So you can just select the layer, the OpenStreetMap layer, uh, and um, drag and uh, drop it just at the last position. And yes, the world map uh, appear again. So we can go to the uh, main land, the Chile uh, mainland of Chile. So we can now add the other file, this one. Same here. You saw uh, that uh, some of data uh, lacks of coordinates. So this one uh, will not have a point. That can be uh, problematic in some case, but um, it's, uh, it's sad. That we don't have the location of the invented. Or so we can load the other one. So, same as uh, previously. Add it. And um, 
you can uh, select the layer. The active layer is a layer with uh, which is um, underlined. So when the layers is underlined and you click on attribute table, it shows the data behind the point. So we can select the other one. And yes, ID, latitude, longitude, scientific name, common names. Uh, Species guest is just uh, one field um, more in this uh, in this one than this one. So okay. Um, for the other one, um, I will just for fast uh, interaction uh, with uh, QGIS. I will just uncheck this one to hide it. Um, I will uh, open the other data, the hongos of um, mushroom data. Uh, so, a more field layer. And uh, you see that uh, our uh, latitude, longitude, altitude uh, data, but a lot of data lacks of uh, these coordinates. So we see here that uh, north edge, south edge, east edge, and west edge. So it's interesting. It's like a, a box defined here. So we... I can tell you why that is. That's because... I originally did not want the exact coordinates for most of this. This is my data. I didn't want the exact coordinates uh, published on the internet. So the latitude and longitude fields are would be most useful for this demonstration. The south as edge, east edge bounding box might not be very useful mm. for this. OK, so now um... You can add uh, point coordinates like we do on the botanicals, uh, or botanical data, um, longitude, latitude. You can add a Z, a Z field uh, for the altitude, the elevation uh, data. So we can just select altitude in the Z field. M field is for merger field. Uh, it's rarely used, but certain text can use it to have a measure uh, directly in the geometry and not uh, in the fields. It can be convenient. So um, I can add the, the layer and rearing layer. Yeah, here. And we have a very few uh, data. So we can tweak it and extract the box we saw earlier. So here, uh, with a right click on properties or directly uh, by clicking here, you can open the styling panel. Styling panel, um, it can... Um, do the style of the layer. So if I want to make the points bigger, I can. Um, if I want to change the color, that's here in the uh, styling panel. So I will go <laughs> a little more fast here. Uh, just uh, know that exist. You can add symbol layer. Symbol layer is just if you want to make a more complex, uh, more complex uh, style uh, with for your points. If you want a little red square uh, with uh, within uh, 
green circle or layers like the other layers uh, the style layer the top layer style is the first one you will see so here it's a blue yeah it's a blue uh, cross on the top be uh, below we have a little red square and below we have a green circle so that's not uh, what i want to show you here you uh, can uh, select the symbol layer type and uh, there is a geometry generator so we can uh, generate uh, geometry uh, for, so i can just make a point but here i want to make a square a uh, rectangle more precisely with the um, the data uh, that uh, i will go in the field uh, i will check of the four fields uh, we saw earlier um, i just select it so the edge um yep yes oh okay no i just uh, press uh, a wrong key so east edge and west edge i just comment with uh double minus k uh, and first, we want to make a po point. So, oh, you can just type point, and uh, here is make point. So, I will go in the function, add the, the description, so make a point with x as first argument, uh, comma, and y for the y coordinate of point. So the first point will be the, um, the bottom left one. So x uh, is the west, and south is the y. So we make a point. So if we click OK, we saw the point disappear, and few points are here and here. Hmm, interesting. So now we continue. We have to make a line. So we make line, and here, is a list of points. So we can do points. So we do four points. First one is the bottom left. The second one, I will bottom left. Here, um, top left. Uh, top right, and finally, uh, bottom right. So, um, the fields here are not uh, okay, just for the fourth one, so top left, north. Everywhere that's top, it's north. So, north, north, um, south, it's for bottom, it's okay. So, now left and right. So, west is left, left, it's okay. So, east is for right. So, make line. First point. 
second point, third point, fourth point, and end. Okay. And no, not here, just a line string. So yeah, we have line strings, but we want a polygon. So we have to close it. So we have to add another point, the first one. So just make this one. And to make a polygon, you have to have a line that's uh, closed itself. So you can make polygon. The function is uh, is uh, is uh, um, is described uh, in this one. But uh, I know it, so I just type directly, and I will choose polygon. Yeah. And there is a large polygon that masks uh, everything, so I can go in fill, and I can play with the transparency. And uh, I think there is or there are poly uh, large polygons and few ones, so it's good. Um, but uh, here is just a style. So we want to go deeper to make uh, geometry. So in the style, we have the geometry generator. We, ha we retrieve the formula that uh, we make here. And uh, we go in the toolbox or processing toolbox. Uh, that's a lot of tools uh, within QGIS, uh, QGIS uh, uh, for processing data. Don't, so we want geometry from expression. So geometry uh, from or just geometry expression, geometry by expression. Yeah. So from the mushroom layer, output polygon, and uh, geometry expression, we can click here. You can even, uh, uh, you can delete this one, and you can have recent, and you have the other uh, input we make earlier, just uh, paste the polygon one and OK and run. So here we have uh, the polygon layers uh, from the um, mushroom layers and um, we can uh, just toggle editing. And uh, here is the selection uh, toolbar. That uh, this toolbar can be drag and drop um, here, for example. And I can select feature with this tool and just uh, drag and drop a little a rectangle and select uh, the feature uh, that intersects my rectangle. And here you have uh, selected features and you can delete selected. Yes, save. And uh, toggle editing another time to don't do uh, some uh, non uh, editing that you don't want. So in the styling panel of this new layer, you can add a little transparency. If you click on color, you have uh, different color uh, tools. So I just add a little transparency to see through the, the polygons. So here, uh, it, it is a lot of polygon, uh, overlapped polygons. So we can uh, add more transparency. Yes, it's okay. So, yes. So the data is within this rectangle. 
and uh, within this one and uh, here you have a lot of uh, other rectangles so now uh, i will um a rectangle is not yes it's not precise but i want to retransform uh, this one into um points but if you see um the um, if you draw oh, sorry if you drag a line here of the rectangle the centroid uh, like its name uh, it's not like um, it's near the gravity center of a polygon but not always so in gis we call it uh, centroid and uh, if we drew uh, some uh, we computed the centroid of the squares uh, the the points go into the water so we don't want that so we need to uh, cut polygons with um, land to be sure that the point uh, go on the land. Uh, but before to do that, I will just introduce you about projection and the coordinate systems. So here I have the scale uh, for those who are. Uh, who have already uh, play with uh, paper maps or maps in general. So, so, so close. Okay. Okay. So, here is, um, is the scale, uh, the current scale. And uh, we thought earlier that we are in uh, WGS 84. That is a system a coordinate system but not a projection it's not projected um, we have two system uh, gps can uh, with a latitude and longitude can um, get data and coordinates all over the world so uh, it's based on a earth model that is uh, an ellipsoid so it's in the 3d space and uh, all units, the coordinates, are angles. And the surface uh, drew by uh, this box are in uh, degree square, uh, square degrees. So it's not very convenient to uh, compute because a degree um, don't have the same area or the same length uh, at, uh, in function where you are on Earth. So you can make uh, the, for example, you can make the um, the um, uh, the world tour in few minutes if you are. If you are in the pole, at the pole north, if you are uh, close to the very the, the point of the pole, north pole, you can uh, by minute uh, do a world tour. If you are at the equator, it's not the same distance. So we are where when we are in WGS eighty four, and we play with latitude and longitude are uh, in a 3D space. And to prove it, um, yeah, here is the scale of the central point of my Canva. The Canva is uh, what is displayed here. And if I moved a little, the scale change. Because uh, the, the center of the, of, the, of the canvas is not anymore at the same place. And the, if it moves, I don't uh, touch the mouse wheel. The mouse wheel um, will zoom in on the mouth, but uh, I don't touch it. I just pan left and right. 
and this the scale moves. So and the scale changes. So it's a it's a, it's a good way to know if you are in a 3D space or two uh, two D space. So we need. Uh, to do uh, most of the GIS operations and computation uh, be in a 2D space. So we will protect the data. So I will close this one, this one. Okay. And I will look at uh, projection on the uh, chili. So I just type Chile and um, I don't remember the, 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 the Chile one. I just want to, I think I, I know it's a UTM uh, 18F. But I don't remember the the. Um, I don't remember even remember the, or maybe in the PRG. So just load it and we will see. Ah. Uh, Thirty-two thousand uh, seven hundred and eighteen for a PSG code. Okay, so we will uh, save it. So and there it is. No chili, just uh, WGS eighty-four. UTM zone 18 S as for South and it's exactly uh, where we are and um, I don't know if it's uh, the official projection um, of Chile uh, yes if you are here it's not really correct but maybe it's another UTM zone, the 19 ones. And if you are on the island we saw earlier, it's definitely not the right projection. But here, our data is located here, so we can use this one. And a projected um, coordinate system is, uh, is not in degrees. Uh, is in meters and uh, you can now uh, have a good distance and areas. So first, we have to save our file in the right coordinate system. So for this, we do right click, export, save feature, we can do in many, 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 many uh, system we but we can do in S3 shape file. It's um, or your package, but um, for beginners, I kind of recommend S3 shape files. It has a so lot of files. I will show you. Um, shape files are all these files. Uh, if uh, if you miss one of the sidecar files, it can go wrong. So when you play with shape file, um, be sure to have all the files around the dot shape one. And um, just select a location. So this one. And uh, we can do a new uh, so shape, and uh, with uh, no seven eighteen, yeah. And uh, okay, no 
we have to put a name. Um, <laughs> but I think it's this one. Okay. And um, here you know uh, you see the coordinate reference system, um, and that's not what we want. So we go here. We select this one, and OK. And uh, QGIS know that uh, this one is in WGS, uh, WGS84. So it transforms directly uh, in uh, planar on 2D space uh, UTM zone 18S. So it can do transformation. And um, if we load the layer after the saving, I can't. Ah, yeah, no. Uh, I just uncheck this one. OK. So it saved. Um, just saves the other one uh, like this. Um, this one, um, uh, this one, yeah, and um, this one, okay. Oh. Don't want to load it. And uh, this one, export, save feature as um, the name is, yep. yep. Good projection, and check, OK. So we have the free file, so I can start a new project, yes. Mm, this card, I don't want to save it. Uh, save a project is a good idea, but uh, here I don't want to. So um, I go to the shape directory. I just select my shape, uh, the free files with uh, .shp extension. Just drag and drop into QGIS. And there we go. We have a projected um, files. We miss a little one, the Chile country. So just do another project, a new project. Select uh, the Chile country. Um, more pre precise uh, administrative. Uh, yep. Where are my data? I don't know. Uh, so here, here, and here. Uh, please be more transparent, please. OK. Ah, yes. A lot of, uh, so maybe. With the E for identify features, click on the layer, and I can see uh, the attributes of the feature selected. And uh, it's uh, region uh, de los Lagos. So we can uh, name our export like this. So save only selected features, select the right um, uh, Coordinate system, uh, uncheck this one, and um, admin 
Los Lagos. Save. OK. So new project. And uh, we go in the this one and just add Los Lagos. OK. OK. What? This one doesn't work? Why? Yes, OK. It's well projected. Mm. This one? OK. This one? This one? OK. So I don't know what uh, going on so here we can now have access to tools uh, in vector layer uh, in vector menu um, and we can uh, like clip yeah i think our difference mm. I think clip, it's okay. So, uh, impute layers, I will clip um, Angos, the rectangle with uh, the mushroom data with uh, admin los lagos and run. Close. And yes, now we have the data of the squared, but uh, in in the land. So if we if we look, we have this one. We have eighteen uh, data, and mm. this one we have. 85. Why? Ah, I know. Because um, some of the data are located uh, Where I live, here. in Texas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Apologies. But, I should have I cleaned, uh, cleaned that up this... before I sent that to you. That's my bad. <laughs> you can delete all that. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's okay. Uh, it we can uh, show that the UTM uh, because uh, Texas uh, correct me it's in the north hemisphere yes yeah and um, the Chile is in the south uh, hemisphere so uh, we choose uh, you for Chile that the Texas data is not really supported and very not well placed uh, with this projection. So, and the island one is not uh, really good. So, we can clean up a little. So, we can just toggle editing, um, select it, just delete with the del button. Um, and it's good. This one, toggle editing. Yeah, I can delete it. And the other one will uh, disappear uh, when with the clip one. The clipped one uh, kept only the 18 uh, features that uh, intersect the Los Lagos Ridge. Um, and now with the clipped so same, it's uh, observation clipped uh, we can do in vector we have uh, geometry tools uh, to do and have centroid so we can have centroid, just uh, 
select dots. Uh, why? We want, we need a point on surface. Uh, so we can go in the toolbox uh, and uh, point in surf point on surface. Yes. And uh, ops clipped and create a point on for each part. No, just one point for each row. So we will have 18 points. So run. Close. So now, yes, it is. So it's not precise because um, there are big rectangle at the beginning, but now we have a point. Maybe here, maybe it's the great and the good location, but we know because uh, it's plants and not aquatic one. That's not in the sea. So maybe it's here. So it's good. Um, or we can keep the polygon uh, clipped with the Los Lagos region. But uh, if you want, you have the point. So we can export uh, our uh, can I ask, work. Can I ask a question, Julian? Yes. Um, I, uh, that that point uh, for, for which species or like the, the point that was on the island that's called Isla de Castro, I believe that one. Yeah. What species is that represent or? Uh, I think there are many here. Okay. And um, I th just select it. Ah. And um, in uh, QGIS, you can uh, you can move the selection to the top, and yes, you can see directly the selected uh, record one. Yes, is that's okay. not lines and not columns. That's fields and that's records. Okay. So these yes, are, these are the it looks like thank you. Yes, mushroom. And uh, aquatic mushrooms um, are not really... <laughs> I haven't found those yet. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe there are... Uh, but uh, there are some of aquatic mushrooms uh, not totally uh, in, the, in the water, I, I believe, uh, just uh, with a very moist and uh, water environment. Uh, not in under the water, but um, okay. Just uh, botanic and uh, uh, f um, uh, mushroom uh, ecology. So we have uh, the mushroom points, and uh, you can save features uh, in the right connection. Yes. Uh, now we work in the UTM eighteen uh, S. So. We can uh, name it, um, I think it's this one, but named points. Okay. And add the saved file to the map, yes, because this one is uh, in the same uh, coordinate system. And I can uh, select this one, select this one with shift, uh, the shift K uh, pressed and uh, this one. And uh, we can do this one. Remove layer here uh, doesn't, uh, ah, if it's a memory layer, that's uh, it's a memory, in memory layer. Yes, if I click here, it will be lost uh, forever. Uh, this one is on the disk. Yeah, it's on my uh, disk. And uh, if I click remove, uh, it will be there. So it, this button, uh, don't delete files on disk. So, okay. Um, and if we show admin, it's okay. So, uh, now we have some uh, data. We can do some um, 
some field management. Um, we can just uh, we can check the point and the data uh, taxon ID taxon ID and um, scientific name uh, here scientific name too okay and taxon ID and uh, here we have uh, no where are my f yeah here we have a lot of fields so um, where are they uh, here consensus underscore and uh, consensus underscore one uh, because shape files uh, have um, by default uh, 10 character in their field so when you save in shape file it, it truncates the field at 10 characters so QGIS have three larger fields name than 10 so it truncates at 9 and add uh, one, two, three. So uh, beware when you save in a shape file. Uh, you have uh, ten uh, characters maximum for the fields. Um, so we will uh, keep this one and this one. So just uh, close this one and um, go to the toolbox and refactor fields. Uh, the first one, yeah. Uh, so I will uh, just enlarge this one. Just keep um, scientific. Taxon ID, I will uh, go in the first position. And the other one just here. So taxon ID, set, uh, scientific name. just shot uh, the the name uh, for the 10 ah, sorry wrong sorry ah, I have some okay One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, okay. Let's go here. It's more, yeah. Um, it's okay. So run. I have my first field. Second one. Um, yes. I want consensus underscore top top field. Yep, and consensus one second field. So all the other and uh, this one sign name and taxon ID. Run, closed. This one is the uh, 11. OK, uh, if we click uh, right click, we can uh, add show feature count. So the 11 one is this one. And uh, feature count here is 60 features. So here. We know that the layers we refactored, uh, that's this one. So here, uh, it's, a, yes, this one is not refactored. So scientific. And uh, taxon ID. And uh, the other fields, OK. 
and run close. So the free uh, uh, the free uh, we can check by the feature count. Uh, we can check if the layers are different. Yeah. So we can merge um, in vector data management, uh, merge vector layers, impute layers, the free refactored. OK. Uh, destination series, boy, it's optional. So it's the same as the original layer. They are all in the same. So we can, by security, uh, select it, but it's not. Uh, it's not our case here, so run. And we have a merge file. Uh, so all observation. Oh, no. Oh, something go wrong. OK. But you get the point. OK, scientific name. Um, uh, OK, I think I will, I will, I will do the, um, the refactor fields. So sorry, refactor fields, hongos. Um, Here is the name, not here. Here is the expression. So, yeah. That's why I have uh, some trouble to fix the name. Uh, so, here, taxon ID, same name. OK. And here it will work. So, Hongos. And the other one, uh, the O2 here, um, scientific field here. Um, the name, taxon ID, OK, run. And the last one um, here. Yes, taxon ID, please, taxon ID here, scientific name here, no, the name, yep, and run, okay, and we can check, yes, now it's good, so vector data management, merge vector layers, select the free refactored run close and uh, this one can be dropped and here we have all the layers so the yes we have the name of the original layer but uh, it's all the same so we can drop so here in the attribute table you can toggle editing mode and you, and you can drop fields, so layer, path. OK, so save and toggle editing again. And um, save the layer. You can export or make permanent. Make permanent, uh, it's the same. Just select the file name, um, observations. Save, OK. So now it's saved on the disk. Uh, and this one are now uh, not useful anymore. OK, so we have a lot of points. How many? Uh, 89, OK. And uh, all the points are not on the within the region of Los Lagos. So we can um, 
select uh, it with by um, location vector research tool select by location so I will rename 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 where where name layer uh, observations okay so now uh, vector research select by location observation ah within Los Lagos creating a new selection yes run close so this one are not selected it's okay this one too but here this point and this point are really really close of uh, our uh, region and uh, we didn't uh, catch it so we have to make a little uh, buffer uh, of the uh, Los Lagos region so we can select our uh, Los Lagos region vector geoprocessing and buffer and uh, ah, before we can measure the distance with the the shore. Mm. Now we have we are in the UTM 18S. Uh, that is uh, we have uh, we can check Cartesian uh, in uh, Cartesian system. Uh, Three hundred and seventy meters. Okay, for the first point and the second point. Uh, closer. So um, go for uh, 4,000 meters buffer. So you can do here geoprocessing tools, buffer, this one, yeah. 80 meters. Uh, segments are the, um, are the number of nodes of the buffer. Uh, if you do a round buffer with three segments, it will do a sort of triangle. And if you want a perfectly shaped uh, circle, you have to increase the number of uh, nodes. Here, it's not interesting to have a perfect uh, circle, so we have just to say 20. It's okay. Run. It can be quite long because the uh, original polygon of uh, Los Lagos region um, is a little complex and it depends uh, of the computer. And now this point is within the buffer, so we can do vector, research tool, select, no, not this tool, research by and select by location. So observation are within the buffered uh, region. Create a new selection, you run, close. Yes, my points are selected. So I can now just do here. You can, you have tools with a little drop down arrow here. You can invert selection, not in this one. I have to do all the thing again. Uh, select by location, observation are within Burford, run, close. So, observation, invert selection. Yes, the other one are selected. And uh, oh, you can toggle editing and delete. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and the just, buffer. For, just for clarity for people watching, we're doing this because of the size of the data. Is If we were to... Uh, analyze those other observations. It would be a much yes larger data size we, in process. Yes, time. yes, yes. Always save the original data. Always uh, think uh, about what you want uh, in final. But maybe uh, I am uh, I do some research in the region of Los Lagos, and I don't care of other data outside so 
I don't want them. I can keep it uh, in some uh, directory, uh, but uh, it's not my uh, responsibility or interest, so I can delete it. So keep in mind what you want uh, uh, in the f uh, final uh, thing. So uh, now we have uh, 40 uh, observations and uh, we can um, we can uh, add some uh, land use that uh, Thomas uh, gave me and uh, there is uh, there are a lot of polygons if we look at the feature count yes uh, more uh, 100 thousand uh, features F a feature is um, a geometry with uh, its attributes so it's a lot so uh, QGIS uh, can display it but uh, it it, um, it can be slow uh, for um, small scale um, so uh, here it's not very explicit uh, because it's all green. Uh, you can change uh, here in the style panel. Uh, you have a handy button here to change just the color. Yes, but it's not really uh, descriptive of the uh, land use. So. In the layer styling panel, you can, you have drop down here. Who, uh, we just play uh, with a single symbol. Um, but if we click on this drop down, uh, yes, no symbols. So it's hide. Uh, now we choose categorized uh, symbology. And we have a drop down to get the value. So maybe the name can tell us what is uh, interesting. So I see user. So I can test it. Or you can uh, open the attribute table to see uh, what are the great attributes. So here we will use USO, random colors, and you have a button classify. And yes, here are the colors and the values. So uh, the colors are random, so it's not uh, it's not really great. But uh, we have more information. So um, here uh, we can choose a more maybe white, whitish uh, color, um, agua, hmm, close one. So maybe this one, um, bosques. Okay, uh, areas urbanas, industriales, um, gray. Uh, very ugly gray and uh, agricolas uh, this one all other values but uh, logically we have no other values uh, praderas y matorales uh, okay okay uh, okay. Um, I don't know what it is, this one. Uh, it means area without vegetation. Okay, okay, okay. Like desert. Yeah, um, mostly volcanic areas. Uh, In the, for this I, case, it must be volcanic areas. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, so ah, uh, more maybe dark one. Okay, so now we have uh, um, just uh, more meaningful um, data to see. So we can go because we have ugly lines here. Uh, we can go here, and um, we can uh, we can do here in the, each symbol. You can click on uh, each uh, symbol field, and you can drag and drop here to drag the color here, and uh, do that uh, again. Okay. You have more. Uh, you can have uh, diagonal line patterns, other pattern if you want. But uh, I just uh, have a solid pattern here. Um, and okay. Okay. This one, this one, okay. So now we have, um, we saw the maps uh, like this to have uh, the, um, the soil uh, usage. Uh, so we have, uh, we saw volcanic or without vegetation, areas, maybe some elevated uh, areas, uh, the areas with uh, ice and snow and uh, matorales and prairial areas, uh, some agriculture uh, areas. Here you have uh, now a small um, Small, uh, small triangle to click, and you can deploy this one, and you can um, hide all items. You can just check uh, bosques to see where they are, or just some some other features to see directly where they are. So can be interesting. Um, and now um, we want to know um, to retrieve the um, land usage of the uh, the land usage uh, of um, the natural. Uh, the soil usage into our observation. So, uh, this one uh, we can just name it like this in observation and we'll uh, check and uh, open the field calculator and um, we can do it uh, of many manners. Uh, the first and uh, more uh, easy one is to do an intersection. So vector uh, geoprocessing tool intersection observation intersects uh, the layer with uh, natural usage. So impute fields. So leave empty to keep all fields. Yeah, overlay fields. Um, I will just want to have user uh, and uh, OK. And uh, advanced parameter, OK, and run. But um, there is an inconvenience 
because uh, it didn't work. Why? Because it's a point versus observation. I didn't. I didn't read the the error uh, message as invalid geometry. So we can make valid these geometries frequent that uh, geometries are invalid between. It's not really a harmful message, but you have to to make valid some geometries between uh, GIS software. Um, it can be just a matter of designing polygons and uh, QGIS uh, find it uh, not valid for it uh, for itself. So you can uh, fix geometries just uh, put the layer and fix, run, wait. Uh, we thought that the, that uh, more one hundred thousand uh, features, so it can be it get it can be some times. Uh, so and now it loaded. Okay, and yes, we lost all our uh, classification. But it's a handy thing. You can right click on the on our original uh, layer. Style, copy style, symbology, or all style categories, but here it's just a symbology, and go in the fixed geometries, uh, style, paste, style, symbology. Ta-da! Um, and now we have the same, uh, but beware, the fixed geometries, it's memory layer uh, and not saved, so... I recommend to save feature as um, not save, make permanent, make permanent. Yes, it's more uh, so. Yep, and uh, here. Okay, and yes, all this. Processing is very long because a lot of features and lots of points. I think uh, it's a really great uh, work to have um, this um, this natural uh, this soil uh, usage. I think uh, it's great to have uh, this kind of uh, data. So. We can name it like this. This one I can delete it. Okay. So um, yes, intersection. This one vector geoprocessing tool intersection observation with this one. Um, all the input features. So just leave empty to keep all field and user. Okay. One run. Now it works because uh, no red error message, but it's long. Yes. And now if we look at the, the data, yes, we have the three uh, fields, but we see 80, uh, 38 features. And we understand why. Because the two uh, points in the water are not selected uh, by the intersection. So you can leave at it is, but 
it's sad to lo uh, to lose uh, two um, two two information. So you can yes select it and uh, add it manually. Um, all the all the solution is to work directly in the attribute table. Click on the um, field calculator um, and you have to create a new field named Uzo. Uh, it's um, text. Um, how much? Mm, 30, I think. Well, 30 is good. So, um, in have intersect with overlay intersect. Yes, I know this function, so, but you can read, read the, the documentation. Um, and we have to, uh, to, we have some example here, but um, I want uh, to intersect the layer CBN. Uh, okay, and it will, yes, true. Um, so that's not what I want. Mm, I want to return. Oh. I have to install uh, ah, or geometry. I'm sure overlay intersects. Um, okay, I don't know how to to play with it. So hmm. Sorry, so I can't get the feature. I don't know. It's uh, the function uh, returns the current feature spatially intersect at last one feature for the target layer. Yes, but uh, true if the current feature spatially intersects the region. But it always an array of names. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So layer, and if I uh, make this one, no, I don't know. So. Like uh, region name, but uh, an array of names for the region intersected. Yes, but uh, I want uh... no, 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 no. It doesn't work. It says in the so expression, I'm... if you leave it uh, empty, it'll return a boolean. Um, so you you might just leave it without a second parameter. Ah, okay. No, no, no. Uh, oh, no. Layer. I'm... Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So, yes, now I'm happy. Just not name the layer because we are... Uh, don't, don't, it's late here, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a little tired. So, yes, it's the name of the layer, not layer. I just see the parameter here so sorry so now it work so we have an array like uh here so i have only one uh user by intersection because it's a point um and i can have array function array array get 
and I want the first one. So zero. It's zero for the first one. Yes. Okay. Always read the documentation. So here is both case. Second one. Both case two. Lot of both case. Okay, it works. Uh, so create a new field. Okay. Let processing. So function are uh, displayed in groups, and uh, if you are uh, if you play with spreadsheet like Excel functions, it can be somehow similar. So you have to GIA software is an informatic software, so you have to to go deep with informatic software on informatic uh, skills. So save edits. And now, yes, my two points that clearly not uh, aquatic um, uh, aquatic uh, taxa, uh, but it's not uh, it's not it's not bad. So we have a lot of um, data, our data with uh, land use. So I'm happy. Um, and now uh, I want to uh, display it uh, on my website. So for this, um, if I'm a student, uh, uh, personal, uh, I just want to share my data. I've um, solution is QGIS Cloud. Um, that's uh, a solution, a freemium uh, solution. Uh, if we go to the pricing, only for non-commercial and non-government use. So I think if you are an NGO or uh, for personal use, you can uh, share uh, a QGIS project directly. So. We can see examples. If we click on it, beware only uh, 50 megabytes. So, so it's uh, fastly limited. Uh, I, uh, I blocked my position. Don't takes some time to load. Uh, so it's a solution. Here uh, will be the feature information with the layers. And uh, yes, it can be a solution. So. so. You can check uh, yourself uh, on the web at um, uh, so now I think we can style paste style symbology or uh, so you we can and user classify yeah so EBN what are areas seen vegetation? We can copy color. Basques. Basques. Copy color. And go here. And paste color. I think it's this one. Oh, okay. No. 
Vázquez. Just um, last one. If I want to go here, I have to click here and save it here. And we have a uh, cuerpo de agua here. Oh no, this one, this one, no. Okay, but you get the ID. Yes, we okay. understand. You can, um, you can save the styles using that feature or the symbology color, at least. Okay, so, okay. So this one is saved. So we can just remove the layer, just uh, add a project properties ground color more bluish or more a C color one. Okay. So here I will just, uh, yes, with more hmm. Hmm, too, too wide. Okay. So it's okay. So here it's okay. More bigger, I think. Oh, but I have to. To do this one, we have some uh, other um, tiles. Um, yes, I just uh, copy color. You can um, do uh, some SVG marker if you want to have some drawings. So we have um, maybe natural land. Mm, I don't find any, maybe this one. Okay. Ah, too, too small. Um, mm -hmm. 10, mm, 15. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's cool. Uh, you can uh, change this one. Um, and now, uh, to extend uh, the QGIS uh, functionalities, you can go into plugins and manage and install plugins for the QGIS repository. Um, and search for all the plugins with uh, a small explanation, but here we are searching for QGIS2 web and install plugin. We have just to download the data. Uh, plugins are in general uh, very, very small, uh, so it's uh, it downloads uh, fastly. I think here it's because I stream, so it's more uh, slower. And now it's installed it. Okay, installed successfully, okay. So here we have a new icon, um, but uh, like uh, now some plugins uh, adds uh, here, but here it's a web uh, plugin, so it's in the me uh, web menu. So QGIS uh, w uh, to web, create a web map. Yes. 
OK. So, and reload. Maybe. I don't see any. Ah, OK. OK, OK. So, um, uh, you have to. Um, The, the parameters. I don't want uh, any pop-ups uh, with admin los lagos. Okay. Uh, we can even, sorry, I just add the layers, the OpenStreetMap layers. It can be, it can be interesting. So just order the layers. Here, yes, and to to uh, to delete the, the blank uh, space, I just go to simple fill to outline simple line. It's okay. So now uh, the. The blue, uh, the blue of the water is not uh, any more useful. So, you can go in the plugin button. Uh, no pop-ups, no pop-ups for OpenStreetMap. Uh, pop-ups for uh, observation. Yes, it's cool. Um, appearance. Uh, add an address search. Why not? If I want to check my address, uh, if uh, to geolocate me, yes. Uh, layer search. We are, you have uh, options. Um, match project uh, coordinate reference system. Uh, if you want, but I let the um, the the software choose the. Web Mercator is a, a coordinate reference system used, uh, largely used uh, for web viewers, um, and all the options, uh, minimum zoom, maximum zoom, but I let uh, it like that. Um, I can choose my folder, so this one on my desktop, uh, new folder, uh, web test, okay. Select this folder, update the preview. Okay. And export. Here it is. Here, here it is. Uh, but my, I'm not satisfied because um, I just want to check uh, one option more. Um, add layer list. Yes, collapsed. Yes. Uh, export. Export to folder. Yes, export. Okay. And now I've. Uh, my uh, little uh, box so I can uncheck administrative data and observation. I don't know why, uh, because maybe uh, it's because the, ah, it's here. Okay, it's here. So, okay, and when I Click on it. I have a pop-up information with the taxon ID, the taxon, and uh, the uh, land use. So you have uh, a web map. Yes, um, you have blue uh, areas, so you can delete it with um, a setting. Um, here, I think. 
Canvas size, no. Full screen, yes. Uh, export. So now it's full screen. Just uh, the time uh, it, it loads. And uh, yes, if I click on it. So you have an interactive uh, web map. So do you have questions? Have you find this presentation uh, interesting? That's awesome. Yeah, I have a question. Um, you, I know you didn't include the cadastral land use data in your web map. And yes, I know and I did that on purpose because uh, look at the size of the file. Uh, it's a shape file and it's just for the uh, Los, Lago Los Lagos region, uh, one gigabyte size. Uh, and uh, it's very, very long. And uh, because uh, the plugin uh, transform it into um, geo GeoJSON. Yes. GeoJSON. Um, GeoJSON, exactly. Um, it's a kind of web and uh, more useful uh, and the uh, textful uh, format of uh, spatial data. And uh, it's way more bigger yeah. than uh, the gigabyte. And it's very, very long. Oh, and, so, so uh, we don't have the time to let it go there. Right. So GeoJSON is actually larger than Shapefile once it's converted? I thought it was... Small. Yes, oh. very... Yes, yes, because it's not compressed and uh, it's not uh, a DBF uh, file system. Ah. And uh, I think we can reduce the, um, the size of this one uh, by selecting a smaller area uh, of uh, cadastral uh, data, uh, I think we can um, uh, delete points to simpli simplify uh, features uh, because it's a lot of points. So we can simplify features uh, to do things more lighter. Uh, we can uh, delete uh, attributes. Because if we look at the DBF, DBF, uh, yes, it's not the main uh, part of the size of the shapefile, but DBF contains da data. Um, it's uh, already one, uh, mostly uh, 200 uh, megabytes. Uh, the, the real problem here is the geometry. And yes, it's normal because it's a lot of features and more a uh, lot of complex features. And if we look, it's a lot of points and each points have a coordinate. And uh, yes, it needs space to, to, to save it. So I think uh, select some features and... and uh, Simplify it so it will reduce the um, it will reduce the size of the shape so it will reduce the um, the size of the uh, it will reduce the size of the um, geojson so that's big that's why I don't I didn't uh, export it. Okay, yeah, that makes complete sense. I'll, yeah, that because I tried, I actually tried this myself, and I had um, I couldn't get it to work because I tried to include the cadastral data. So it's very helpful that you yes, that, that you yes, found that. me uh, because it it took a lot of time. It's very very long, and I didn't know if uh, it will end a day, but. <laughs> Um, the, I stopped the GeoJSON uh, generation uh, and uh, the GeoJSON waits uh, around um, 
13 gigabytes when I stop it. So, uh, and yeah. it took a lot of time. So, think about um, small thing uh, on the uh, yes. Uh, data like this uh, on server because uh, behind is it's uh, static yes you can move yes uh, uh, the the la the open layers map uh, with the third bar uh, or th osono and uh, chile yes it works uh, so um that's uh, the map uh, behind is dynamic, yes. Ah, but uh, all the data is local and uh, it's always the same. It's ne never a uh, chance. I see. Uh, so the, like these points will be always here. What? Uh, if you like turn off your Wi-Fi or something, will the map still load fully or will you will you only some parts of the tiles load and you'll have a lot of empty data? I don't uh, I don't understand exactly the, uh, the question. Uh, do you have like the entire world tile loaded in the HTML? Like do you have it saved somewhere or is it like loading content from OSM? When you're loading, ah, it's uh, uh, yes, yes, it's loading from OSM. Yes, that's um, that's the advantage of um, the uh, under QG QGIS. I just close the plugin uh, windows because I load the um, OpenStreetMap uh, with X, Y, Z tiles, and it's a web uh, file. So it's linked from web. So it's not on your computer. That's why it's a lot of features. And that's why uh, you can just uh, display image. So with local files like the Los Lagos region administrative uh, count, uh, 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 what's the name? Um, it's like state I don't. Or uh, yes, yes. Boundaries. I um, I thought uh, boundaries. Sorry. Um, and uh, some points. It's not EV. Uh, we can look at it. Uh, it's in the 674 on my desktop. So we can delete the older one. We can see the properties. Yes, it's only uh, 17 uh, megabytes layers. Um, admin Los Lagos. Yes, it's uh, 13 megabytes, around 13 megabytes. Just one feature of the administrative region. So uh, think about the one gigabyte uh, and if we look uh, in uh, the shapefile of admin Los Lagos it's only um, five megabytes so it's more than the double so if you want larger data two options um, first options make it lighter so less features more uh, more uh, features on only a small area, study area, small study area, yes, or simplify uh, features. That's the first option. Second option, it's just uh, under um, QGIS to make a layout. So I can... Uh, make a new print layout, my layout. So I just uh, add a map. Just uh, here I will. Oh, sorry, I I've lost my uh, the 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 layer. 
So, yeah, okay, okay, okay. So I've lost to all my, uh, ah, maybe style. No, no, I know I not I the style uh, in my, uh, okay, but uh, you can make, well, I just make a categorized uh, style very fastly. It will be ugly uh, because, uh, yep, uh, warm plus simple outline. No. Okay. Classify. Okay. So, yes, the color are ugly. Are not representative, but um, you you can imagine. So um, I can add um, scale bar. Okay. Um, I can add a north arrow, but uh, it's north oriented, so maybe it's not uh, useful. Uh, title here. If you, it's like a PowerPoint or all the box uh, object software. So my title, so I can move the font for a bigger one, not MSL, Arial, 20, okay, my title. Um, uh, and uh, just uh, export it to as image. So the image uh, mm -hmm. will be uh, as that's because uh, uh, an OpenStreetMap layer behind such a um, warning. So yes, uh, save. The last box was for. Um, or choose uh, the protection. So, QGIS export the um, the image, and it's um, it's a solution to um, to have a large uh, have a many 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 data. Yes, it's not interactive. But you have a lot of data, and it's it uh, quite small. You the the image won't be one gigabyte. Look at the image. It's only um, four megabytes. So if I click on it, uh, yes, you have information. You can add a lesion in the layout. It's a solution. Um, but if you want uh, interactive things and big things with uh, like OpenStreetMap server, you have to go uh, further. And um, QGIS, uh, you have to you have to have a server, a web server, and uh, QGIS can be a web server. So you can turn uh, QGIS into a web server and um, you can load data uh, in it and configure QGIS server to serve uh, layers as um, web map service or WMS uh, and the QGIS on the server will uh, look at the shape files, at the at files on database, but shape files are are good or geo package if you want. Um, and uh, the user on the web uh, on the client uh, can ask for a view, uh, maybe here. And um, the the QGIS your server will know that uh, it will load 
the user want only these features. So the server will uh, select only the features on the area and make an image. It will make an image and uh, send it to you. That's how web map server works. That's uh, Google Maps, uh, OpenStreetMap, uh, all works uh, with the same uh, system. So if you want to share more data, more complex data, more larger data, you have to go up uh, with, the, with your system. But uh, one gigabyte uh, layer uh, transformed. Uh, I think I think uh, you can load maybe shape files directly uh, with uh, with open layers, maybe. But think about users, future users that will see your map. They have to load locally in their client uh, the the features, so it will be it will be very 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 heavy. A last um, a last solution. It can be you can do um, you can transform your 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 layer into a raster because we saw that polygons with points and uh, and maybe we can just transform it into an image and uh, if we if we uh, convert it into an image uh, the image will be uh, more lighter than one giga. But a vector, um, a vector file like points, line, polygons, you can zoom it uh, like a SVG file, like a logo. You can fi uh, zoom uh, very, very. Um, uh, you can uh, zoom uh, in a lot, and it will never be pixelized a raster will be so it's so the other inconvenient but if you want um, you can convert it uh, into a raster so I think it's uh, in the raster menu conversion uh, rasterize vector to raster so yes um but um i'm not uh i think it's not the the right uh the right um it can be this one i do uh more this one but uh it's not the Not this one. I want to preserve the um, the colors. So if I uncheck all the things and I test only on this one, just a little test project uh, export export map to image. And um, draw a notation, append zero font. Yes. Okay. So resolution make it uh, th um, 300 dpi. Uh, scale okay. The same scale. Uh, okay. Uh, so save. Um, my raster 
So we will save it here. So rasters. Okay, mm, TIFF format, save it. And why do you use TIFF? And we will... Why TIFF? Uh, because uh, it's a format that uh, QGIS uh, likes. GeoTIFFs Geo are uh, a format that... Um, is uh, really used w uh, within QGIS and uh, PNG have uh, some advantage. Geotiffs are uh, very are natively formats within QGIS. So we have we have our uh, raster image. We thought that uh, it's only uh, thirty megabytes. Uh, so lighter, but if we zoom, yes, now it's pixelized. Not so really, uh, not uh, so many pixelized, but it's pixelized. So just this one is uh, 30 megabytes. So we can test now uh, to export the map. So I just uh, redo the whole thing. Now it's more... Oh, sorry. Big error. I don't want to have this one exported, so I remove it and admin over the raster to see the admin on the raster. So now I can export again. I don't know if uh, QGIS to web. Uh, oh, this one. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 It had saved my uh, my older. Yes. Okay. So um, export to folder. Yes. Web test, okay, uh, export. Yeah, and uh, it exported uh, to PNG, it converted to PNG. So I prefer have uh, Rust uh, GeoTIFF uh, to work within QGIS, uh, QGIS but uh, within the um, web map, it's better. It, uh, for web, it's better to have PNG. So here, you have the land use, and uh, because it's an image, it's lighter. So it can be a solution too. I see. Thank you. That's very helpful. Fincho, do you have any questions? Maybe some questions. Maybe. I was, I was checking ah. in there. I guess not. Who is Miss Miscope? Um, okay. Maybe Fincho's microphone's not working. But... Yeah, it, my microphone okay, okay. wasn't working. Okay. Yeah, I have a question <laughs> okay. about um, Kuji's web. Is, is there a way to have a bottom that allows you to... Um, basically unload a layer because if I want to to have a lot of layers that um, oh yeah that's what I wanted <laughs> exactly that so okay that's what uh, I needed to know yes but you have to check on the um, on the plugin you have to check um, the the add layer list uh, collapsed who expanded uh, uh, I think if I update the preview uh, yes more, like... yes yes that's the expanded sure. one if you want to always show but in general the collapsed one is um, 
it's the more uh, is the more uh, current one and the more common one uh, now. Okay. But uh, I show you on uh, open layers, uh, but uh, at the bottom uh, left you have you can choose open layers, leaflet or mag or, or map box GL. So you have uh, three different uh, web web map viewer uh, with different options so you can uh, play with it but voila great okay this is great uh, um actually actually i was i was thinking about using shiny and r to make a web app web interactive map uh but that will take a lot of time so this is a lot easier okay 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 uh yes but um for um, I think for Shiny, you you have to have a server. Uh, web 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 maps need a server. Ah uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so if you don't have a server, you can you can play locally uh, with. Um, yes, I will load on Windows uh, my Ubuntu. Uh, so I will go to my desktop. Uh, web test uh, the last one uh, 70 uh, where yes this one and uh, python 3 minus m http dot server for a minimal server so now it will serve locally at port uh, 8000 so if I go to uh yes 170 uh, 27.0.0.1 uh 2.4 for the port so 8 me uh 8000 so now i'm on my server so my local server but i'm on the server it's the same yeah. But uh, you you access directly in the yeah. index dot html. But uh, now uh, Python uh, play like a web server. So yes, you you can uh, you can do it uh, locally if you want. I if you want to see uh, what is uh, what is the result. Um, but uh, after you have to to load all the um, all the data uh, on your uh, on your server. Um, you, I I saw uh, the other uh, time uh, in QGIS to uh, web. I saw. Uh, mini oh yes it's an help so it's good but um, I saw an option uh, export to folder or export to FTP site so you can load uh, to a folder locally or uh, and after you have to uh, drag it uh, with a FTP or uh, with um, SCP command like uh, to the server, or you can uh, directly uh, load it uh, to a FTP site if you want. So the QGIS to web have uh, has this option. So other questions? Awesome. Um, I can't think of any right now. Um... I'd just like to thank you again. This is very useful. I think the ecological correlation with the land use was really what I was interested in. And also exporting to QGIS to web. I mean, you know, exporting to web as an interactive map. So that, that was really great to see. Um, I don't have any more questions, though, personally. All the things in ecological uh, or analyzing uh, data, you can, uh, on observation, uh, you can have um, uh, this one, this panel, uh, statistical summary to um, to have 
uh, on observation, you can uh, uh, on uh, land usage. Uh, Forty. It um, it displays uh, fastly uh, the uh, the some data. Uh, so the count, uh, the count distinct, uh, count missing. Yes, two are missing. Uh, are null value um, minimum? Yes, it's text. So it begins with a uh, maximum with p. And uh, minority, less common value. Um, Boskes is a more common value, uh, the length. And if you play with, yes, taxon ID, it's uh, just a number field. Uh, and it's uh, QGIS compute all the statistics, so it can be cool. So. Yeah. With the and with the calculator field, we can uh, do some. Uh, you you can uh, compute other things uh, with fields and attributes and spatial, and you can uh, yes, you can create other data and uh, compute. Uh, we at my job we compute uh, richness. Uh, and this is uh, some uh, we have like a biodiversity we, richness indices. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. And um, maybe it work in France because we have a plate uh, elevation. Yes, we have mountains, but it's not the majority of uh, of land. But uh, yes, I I know the Chile can be uh, high. Uh, have a high place, and we saw with the the ice and the volcanic region uh, some uh, elevate, uh, elevated uh, areas. But um, we usually uh, play with um, grids. We have grids, um, so you can in a research tool create grids um, of a rectangle. A square is a rectangle. Now we are in the um, in a um, in a projected uh, coordinate system. Uh, you can uh, from the map Canva extent. So I will uh, go for I don't know uh, how much it is. Mm. Seventy kilometers. So go for five, five kilometers, five kilometers grid. And for five kilometers grid, um, you have to um, delete the, um, the after the, just the number after the, and run the, the, the values. The trailing digits. Yeah. The trailing digit. Thank you very much. And uh, round it to the um, five thousand uh, five thousand meters. Uh, yes. And uh, this one is zero 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 zero. Okay. And this one, yes, two zero zero zero. Okay. So run it. Close. So I've um, agreed, and um, uh, with uh, you can logically, yes, uh, high uh, elevation areas don't have the same area, but it can be a great tool to have. Uh, to do sample to know uh, the the sampling uh, efforts of the area, etc. That's uh, that's uh, a grid is a, a useful um, a useful tool uh, and uh, investor tool 
a random points for um, random samples if you want to to check uh, something regular points um yes you have some tools in under qgis so for me i've told you a lot i hope uh, you are yes maybe you are not ready to to do all the things but uh, you can uh, i hope uh re review the the video view again the video and uh, feel free to ask uh, me questions thank you for listening and uh, have a great uh, have a great day yeah. yeah yeah thanks for the presentation Yes, thank you so much, Julian. This is this is very helpful. I think it'll help a lot of people. And as I mentioned in my introduction, I will have it translated into Spanish, so it'll be provided. <laughs> Courage. It'll be provided to uh, another community out there. So, Because the video is very very long, so courage. Uh, no, I have someone that is. Oh, is okay. I'm going to do a voiceover. What? Uh, maybe. Oh yeah, maybe it's possible. But uh, my accent is not very, very good, so... <laughs> That's all right. Sorry. It's good enough. It's good enough. You did good, Julian. Thank you so much. Have a nice uh, rest of the day, and uh, see you soon. Thank you. On uh, the GIS... GIS... <laughs>